I think the world is changing and has a greater understanding that everybody faces these challenges. We all have mental health and it's how we give ourselves the best opportunity of thriving in the environment that we live. During the pandemic, I've been very conscious that the messages coming through on television, there's a really strong awareness of, of mental health and, and its importance to, to our whole society. With you, Gareth, is there one incident in particular that sort of you feel really started off your understanding and your um, uh, feelings towards mental health? Well, I, I, I've had quite a high profile uh, situation that in missing the penalty with England. Without doubt, when I look back, that was professionally the most challenging experience that I've been through. You're in a probably the biggest game the team have had for 50 years at that, or 40 years at that time. I forget how many years of hurt we've had now. We've had a lot up. of hurt, don't worry. There's a, there's a large number of people who can relate to that. <laughs> um, so, the country was on a tidal wave of emotion and, and good feeling. And then you, you walk away from the stadium feeling, you know, you're the person that ultimately that is responsible for that finishing. I, I never felt anger, actually. I just felt regret, remorse, um, responsibility to a small degree that still lives with me. To have failed under pressure under that huge spotlight is hard professionally to take. And the fact that we're sat here and talking about your penalty, you know, at th that moment for you. Is it fair that we're still talking about it? Um, well, it, it's tough because even now, um, I still have regrets for the team I played with. The, the, uh, so although I've had an element of resurrection and redemption, and mm. but the team I played with missed the opportunity to win a, a major tournament and those guys didn't get another chance. And of course, because we've been sat at home all summer, everybody keeps replaying those damn games. I can't avoid it. Oh, okay. So there's a reality that um, actually we, we have to face those things. We, we can't hide from them. I can't hide from the fact that that happened. Um, and then I have a decision and a choice as to how I approach mm. dealing with it. And time has given me um, the opportunity to put that into better perspective. What, what we've just lived through for the last three months, as an example, uh, wh where does missing a penalty kick actually have any importance in, in the overall scheme of life? And do you think if there'd been a bit more of a formal structure around the England team back then, do you felt you could have opened up more, lent on more support, either from your teammates or from mm. the sort of club, um, the country kind of structure around you? I remember going back to the hotel and having dinner and sitting with Stuart Pearce, who'd lived through what I was going to live through. So he was able immediately to give me some information around what the next few months might look like, the things I might experience. But looking back, that was invaluable, really. When you've messed things up as I have, and you realise that professionally, that's probably as difficult as you're going to face, it almost liberates you to say, right, OK, let's just attack life. Um, and I know the negative consequences that could be there. Um, similar when I was a young manager and I lost my job. The loss of self-esteem for any person losing their job, and a lot of people are going to experience that over the next few months, sadly, um, is a huge blow, huge blow. And you, you, you don't know how to talk to your own family about it. You don't know how to look at people as you walk down the street. You assume everybody's looking at you and they're probably not. But you're the inner voice in your head, which is such a key, um, to everybody's well-being um, is, is telling you all of these things and can be running away with itself and catastrophizing. And The idea of being able to talk about it is not a weakness. Mm. The idea of being able to be open about your emotions and fix a problem is a positive, it's a strength, mm. not a weakness. And I think that's, that culture is something that we hopefully are seeing a, a slight shift in, but we need to you know, use certain vehicles like professional sportsmen and women to, to enhance that, that message. What are you doing yourself as, as England manager to to kind of enhance that and make sure that's happening. If, if we look at what, what's important moving forward for young players, old players, society generally, especially with everything we've experienced over the last few months, then people's mental health is, is one of our primary um, focuses. It will have such a big effect on, on our society. It's going to be more challenging. We're going to go through a challenging period as a nation and, and the whole world is going to go through a challenging period. So 
we have to have the support there for, for people. I recognise that, you know, as a manager, I need to step up even more and make sure that to begin with our own players are, are cared for, but can we affect the wider game? I think that's one of the reasons we're talking because the, the message in a high profile way can start to influence people's thinking. And Gareth, is there a, is there a message, a specific kind of message you'd like to get to the, to the, to the fans, to the players, to the sort of the wider footballing community about how you feel about mental health and the importance of it? I think there's very often this feeling I'm the only one, there's nowhere to go and the, some of the most successful people in the world have had these issues or have problems with self-confidence, self-belief. It, it doesn't have to be an extreme case. There, there, there are various issues with people's mental health that can affect how they feel or how they perform and mm. it, it's making sure that we don't feel there's a stigma for people um, that, that it's acceptable to look for help.